All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Alpha Obasins channel. I hope everyone's having a great morning. I tried making this video a couple times, but uh, yeah, it's just going to be another discussion piece over coffee here while I get my day started. And uh, I want to elaborate in a much more calm and collected manner regarding my rant, uh, my yesterday's rant video regarding new Linux users and how power users introduce them to Linux. I actually made a little bit of a document yesterday. I'm not gonna run over it right now because I'm just too tired, but building your own custom Linux distro and how to do it, I broke it down into two simple steps and I'm pretty sure it's gonna light a fire under a lot of power users britches in, in, in what I have to say there, but we'll discuss that in another time. I just kind of want to elaborate on yesterday's video because I have no doubt that anybody that actually made it through uh, the entire video, let alone the first offensive topic for conversation, <clears throat> they're going to think that I've somehow got a problem with uh, forks and offshoot distributions like, uh, you know, Ubuntu and, and Zorin OS and all that other stuff. And that's not the case. All of those distributions are popular for a reason, because power users like to have the ability to just pick a distribution within their, you know, favored flavor of Linux, whatever you want to call it, and install it onto their hardware and just start using their computer. They don't have to go through the process of installing every single tool that they might need. It's just there. That's why hackers and all of that are going to go straight for Kali or Parrot or something like that because it comes pre-packaged with everything that they might need and it's incredibly convenient. There's nothing inherently wrong about using those distributions. The the basis of the argument that I had in that video was simple. I just feel that it is excessive to recommend a, a fork specialized distribution uh, to new users. Because it, 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 theoretically in my head, of course, I think it would be much more effective. I think it would not only help the new user, but it would help the, the, the power users like myself that are regularly trying to help other people learn how to use Linux. I think it would help us all by recommending the vanilla base distributions. We all know that Arch, Fedora, and, and Debian are kind of the shot callers of Linux. Pretty much every fork and, and offshoot out there is based off those three distributions, barring things like Gentoo. But if we recommend that they install these one of these three base distributions based as I, as I mentioned based on what we daily drive the only and I, I hope you i hope you're listening to me very close right here <laughs> the only reason that i recommend arch linux to any new user is because that's what i daily drive it's what i'm most familiar with so why wouldn't i it's not because it's superior to fedora or debian it's merely because it's what I daily drive. I am most familiar with the repository of Arch Linux. So therefore, if a new user comes to me and says, hey man, uh, what's the best distribution for Linux? I'm like, well, there is no best distribution. They're actually all identical. Um, what do you want to do with it? And then they run down, give me the rundown on what they want to do with it. Then I ask them, okay, what kind of hardware do you have? So then I can be familiar with, okay, do they need the AMD packages? Do they need the NVIDIA packages? And then I will explain to them, okay, you need these display drivers, which it will give, likely give you an option. I mean, even the Arch installer gives you the option of whether you're getting AMD drivers or NVIDIA drivers or Intel drivers. You install them, and then you give them a desktop environment of choice. You ask them, you know, have you looked at these different distributions? And you know right out the gate, they're not going to know what you're talking about when you ask them which desktop environment you like, because they're going to start spitting out, well, I really like Zorin OS, or I really like Ubuntu, because they saw a picture in a blog somewhere, and they think that is the distribution. And, and we all know that that is the, one of the greatest misconceptions when it comes to new users, is that they think the desktop environment is the Linux distribution, and that's not the case. That's that's why we're fighting this problem in the first place. So you explain to them the the desktop environments. You tell them pick one, and so now they've got their operating system that you're capable of helping them on if they have any trouble, provided you're willing to do so, which we'll elaborate on in a moment. But then you give them their display drivers that match their hardware, and then you give them the the desktop environment that suits their taste and then you explain to them that linux has a gui based 
Package Manager, also known as AKA the App Store to consumers. Okay, let's speak in their terms. Who cares if they understand? The, the, the problem that I have here is that the vast majority of Linux users that are trying to help new users get into Linux is that they, want, they expect them to understand the fundamentals of the operating system and the kernel and all of the other stuff that's involved with using Linux. And, and that, I just find that so ironic because how many users out there that use Windows actually know how to use Windows? How many of them actually know how to use the command prompt? How many of them actually know how to use the PowerShell? Checkmate, dude. Like, the vast majority. I'd say like 95% of Windows users don't know how. They don't understand how it works. You mention file structure and they have no idea what you're talking about. So that's, that's, that's what we're dealing with here. Uh, they don't care about the source code. They don't care about the functionalities. They don't care about the services. All they want is an operating system that boots into a desktop environment and allows them to open their gaming platform or their browser so that they can surf their email and their pornography. <laughs> that's the reality of it, okay? It, it, when, it, when you really just break it down, get all the bullshit out of the way, a consumer level user that's looking to get away from Linux just wants a Windows-like experience where they can open their browser and do whatever they do on their browser uh, you check their Twitter, their Instagram, their Facebook, you know, insert use here through browser. Most common users that I've ever seen, I, I can honestly say every single consumer level user that I have used that doesn't understand the operating system or anything, the only thing they ever do is open up their browser, go to the websites that they prefer to use, download some files, pictures, maybe a video once in, every now and then, and so then they need a file explorer so they can go to their downloads and their pictures, and their music, and their, their video. That's the reality of what a consumer end user is like. They don't even use the system. They just use the browser and the file explorer. That's the reality of end user consumer um, users. <laughs> uh, give me a second. I need more coffee. So that's the reality of it. Give them a desktop environment that they're comfortable with, a file explorer and a package manager, and they are capable of figuring out the rest on their own, at least getting started. Because if you set them up properly, then, I mean, they're going to be able to, to open their, their package manager, quote unquote, for the new users, App Store. Just a reiterator here, when I say App Store, it's package manager, package manager, App Store. Once they have that available to them, they're going to understand, okay, I need to open Discover, as an example, to search for Firefox or to search for Brave or Google Chrome or maybe I need a, a, a notepad or maybe I need sticky notes and, you know, maybe I need this or maybe I need that. They're, gonna, they're already used to searching for software through an app store like Windows Store and Google Play. So that's all they really need. But if you're actually trying to help them and you understand by asking them, okay, what's your hardware? And then B, what's your use case? What are you wanting to do with it? You can kind of ease the transition by telling them, okay, well, you know, your, your package manager, you can search for this program or this program, and you can make recommendations based on their use case that they explain to you. Therefore, they really, if you are actually able to take the time to help them out, then basically by knowing their use case, you can sort of more or less help them find exactly what they want to install. And then after that, you're good to go. I mean, you teach them that you open up Discover and it's going to ask you if you want to update. Hell, it'll probably give you an icon on your system tray that says, hey, it's time to update. And, and that's it. That is it. That is how simple Linux can be. Unfortunately, power users tend to get caught up in the semantics of it all and they want to, you know, they want to let their own passion for the operating system bleed into this new user and it just becomes overwhelming. They end up with this, you know, one size fits all distribution that comes with all of these tools that they will absolutely never use. Um, and then when these tools break, then they take to the forums and they start complaining about this distribution or that distribution. And then they're just caught in this vicious, vicious cycle of distribution hopping because they, they think the issue is with the distribution instead of, you know, a broken package. They don't know how to fix it, so it's an issue with the distribution and, and not something simple. 
they, they can't comprehend that. So you give them this bare bones system and it, it's so much easier. You say, okay, well, what do you, you know, can you share my log? Now, now not only do you have a log that isn't overpopulated with crap they're not using and you have to sift through it and all that crap. No, your logs are going to be cleaner because there are less packages involved. Like everything will be easier if we just start teaching Linux, new Linux users to start with a vanilla installation. That's my only argument. That being said, I hope you all have a great day. I'm going to drink my coffee here and we will kind of elaborate on quote unquote building your custom Linux distro and how it's done. Um, it's kind of cliche. I hate writing scripts. I usually do everything just by the seat of my pants, but for the sake of really genuinely trying to stand by what I'm trying to do here. I want to do this to show new users how I would do it if I knew what I knew now and could do it over again. Uh, this is the simple process, the, the two-step process that I would use to get into Linux. So, all right, everybody, have a good day. We'll catch you in the next video.